welcome to happiness blanket channel subscribe this channel so that you may get our new selection from the world best videos assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of smile to jannah alhamdulillah we have reached 300,000 subscribers and i wanted to take a minute to thank each and every one of you guys for clicking that button and saying you know what I don't mind being told when his next video is coming out yeah whether you watch them or not or you just wait for certain videos to come out Alhamdulillah you know what I'm still grateful and if I could come and sit with each and every one of you guys and just have a chat you know what I'm saying I would love to I do kind of get that opportunity through Instagram live so you know <laughs> follow me on there as well but obviously it's not the same but honestly guys you have really changed my life for the better you've helped me through certain times that were not that easy and I hope I have done the same for you guys inshallah and uh, yeah I'm really excited about this video I think there's so much for us to learn and it's apt that this video is the video that's helped us reach 300,000 subs because I think it best represents the channel and where it's come and the sort of message that I still want to get across because I was one of those kids that was brought up in the system I was heavily influenced by celebrities and I know many people are yeah many people are so these sorts of videos I think is a breath of fresh air and it's definitely a different perspective we're not going to see in the mainstream oh there are some of you watching saying oh why are you talking about this and you know what mashallah that's brilliant yeah the fact that you are not influenced by this stuff and your upbringing is different yeah but we haven't had that same privilege Lady Gaga she was a very famous singer and artist who peaked out say around 2011 she's won loads of awards from Golden Globes Grammys and even an Academy Award Brit Awards I mean you name them around I think the 2014 mark she was called the Queen of Pop by Rolling Stones magazine and she was known for her unorthodox way of dressing uh, her videos were everywhere, her music was being played everywhere, interviews were everywhere. I guess what I'm trying to say in a roundabout sort of way is she was certified and she was big. It should also be pointed out that the people that used to analyze music videos would point out a lot of satanic and demonic stuff in her videos. Now is that conclusive proof that she was involved? I mean there's no real way of knowing. I wouldn't be surprised if she was but that being said not a lot of musicians are and I guess that sort of stuff is kind of just used to generate controversy and just debate and, and stuff like that. With her to be honest with the kind of level she was I'd be surprised if she wasn't. Now all of this being said in her latest interview with Apple Music she has made some startling expositions and admissions. I believe God is God began as a sound the first thing that she admitted was popping pills, chain smoking and alcohol. An antipsychotic that I take and it's because I can't always control things that my brain does. The amount of drinking that I was doing to numb myself would sit on my porch and chain smoke all day. The second one was self-harm. I've been open about the fact that I, you know, used to cut. Thirdly it's mental stability. I know that I have mental issues I know that they can be sometimes rendering me non-functional as a human. This was during the time when she used to make her music and the bit that the newspapers picked up on was the fact that she felt like a robot and how that she was looking for humanity within this industry. I was trying to make sense of my humanity within a system that is the music industry that decidedly is also objectifying. So I think Lady Gaga's case 
is very credible and I think holds a lot of weight when we say stuff like fame, money, relationships. They do not have the answer. I would be so sad and then I would hear myself sound happy in a song and I'd go, wait a second, this is completely incongruent and yet it came from me. It goes without saying all of us have problems. Whether you're a kid watching, whether you're a billionaire, I don't know why you'd be watching but if you are, don't forget to, you know, support the, you know, support, what? Whether you're a teacher, whether you are a therapist, many therapists need therapy themselves. In fact, they're more prone to getting muddled up in their head because they're dealing with a bunch of lunatics, frankly. You can call it issues, you can call it struggles, you can call it tests, trials. Bottom line is everybody is going through something. Now, if somebody claims that they aren't, they're stupid people because they don't even know what they're going through, frankly. Or I think that's a bit harsh, yeah. Maybe they're just not very self-aware and they'll probably get through a few years and when they're in a relationship they'll probably project that on somebody else or you know how it is, yeah. That's the nature of our existence as a human being, yeah. And no amount of science or technology is ever going to change that. Some people think, oh, if this problem went, I mean, I'd be happier, I'd be this, I'd be that. It's a very famous novelist, yeah. He's promoted a lot by Jordan Peterson, uh, Dostoevsky. Yeah, Dostoevsky, this is his kind of worldview, I guess. He believes also that just because a particular problem or hardship has befallen you, if it's removed, that's not going to change anything. Yeah, he also believes that human beings are more inclined towards just being unhappy. One unhappiness is removed, it's replaced with another form of unhappiness. So in other words, it, this is life. Yeah, that's the point that I'm trying to get to in a roundabout sort of way. Everybody's going through it, it's normal. Now here comes the spanner in the works. From a small age, we are told to educate ourselves. Why? So we can get a good job. Why? So we can get money. So education, which is supposed to be learnt for enlightenment and self-awareness and growth, has been linked to money. Your jobs, which you are there from morning to evening and they need to be something you enjoy, are linked to money. And if we look at society, who do they put up on the pedestal? Who is the epitome of success? Celebrities, because they have fame, they have money, everybody at the end of the day, the whole family sits down, watches them. When they're in a local area, everybody rushes and flocks to them. If there's a product being sold with their picture on it, people want to buy it. You know what I'm saying? So indirectly from a small age, we're told, yo, celebrities are there. Naturally, people affiliate happiness, uh, relationships and money with filling our void. Yeah, our void of unhappiness when in reality the void of purpose and unhappiness is not going to be filled with these things. Now I can sit and tell you this but when these very celebrities tell you one after another after another. No matter what I make, no matter how big I become, no matter how many sold out stadiums I have, I can't fix my dad. And eventually when the body's not getting what it needs, it breaks down and that's where depression comes in. Well, consciously I was experiencing an immense amount of depression as a result of this objectification, a lack of feeling like a human. And we know that fame in the 21st century relies on the beauty industry, the music and movie industry. And these industries have an agenda of their own. They are not loyal to their artists because there is a large supply of artists. Every day there's a new artist that's trending. Every day there's a new artist that's come on the scene. It was Lady Gaga one day, the next day Taylor Swift, now Billie Eilish, tomorrow somebody else. And the celebrity lifestyle will always be promoted. Why? Because it's good for businesses. <laughs> it sells their products. It's good for governments. It helps with their political campaigns. 
This individualistic, materialistic, capitalistic society cannot give us the answers to happiness and purpose. They try, yeah? I've seen loads of these movies that are literally all trying to come out and come up with this answer of happiness and purpose. And they come up with really shoddy answers like the purpose of life is to come up with a purpose or happiness is, is doing what you like doing or, or, or helping people. These are more like actions or, or, or lifestyles. They, they don't fill in that particular kind of thing. So when you're kind of given a, a shoddy answer, yeah, it's like a car needs petrol to function. When you give it some other crappy little thing, I mean it might go for a little bit but eventually it's not going to be enough to push that entire vehicle. It's going to stall in the middle of the road and people get hurt. So that's the same thing with us. We're given these, you know, shoddy things which we think, yep, yeah, let, 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 let's lap it up because you know what, it goes well with, you know, a disobedient to Allah lifestyle. So let, let's, let's run with it. But I mean, it's, it's not enough mileage in it. It's not going to last very long. Anytime you don't know what a particular object or machine does, you ask the inventor. The inventor will tell you, this is why I created it. That's the purpose of the machine. And if you listen to him, then you'll get the most out of that machine. If not, you'll probably end up using a very amazing mechanical device as a door stopper because it's chunky. You don't understand what it does. You don't understand the wirings inside. That's the same with us, mate. Yeah, the wirings are our spirit and our soul and our conscious and that's something only Allah can tell us and He tells us that it is only in His remembrance will your hearts find satisfaction. Yeah, In His remembrance, in His appreciation, in His understanding, in His gratitude will you truly appreciate your existence and the existence of life, of this planet, of this world. And Allah tells us the purpose, He says وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That He has created jinn and man for His worship, to recognize Him, to appreciate, to worship. You know what I'm saying? This is the essence to life and once you understand this, you see the world in a totally different lens. You ask the people that are depressed, they have everything but because this, because there's, there's something not right here, therefore it affects their vision and everything that's beautiful becomes tainted with this brush of depression. However, when you're happy in here, you could even have minor things and you know, not great, you could be in a farm, you could be with tatty clothes but you see the beauty in the tatty clothes, you see the beauty in the farm, you see the beauty in, simplicit uh, in, in simplicity. I had to sit through the entire hour um, interview and to kind of take these clips from but the mainstream it just doesn't it doesn't meet their agenda yeah because their whole point is to keep people consuming to keep people aspiring to this lifestyle that doesn't fill the void of purpose and happiness but it's good for them because it brings them views it brings them money it brings them exposure and you know what I'm saying so they're not gonna tell you that hey don't follow these mugs because they're, they're not going to fill that void. Don't watch our videos, don't buy our newspapers and magazines, don't watch our programs. Just thank the Creator and show your gratitude to Him and then you will experience the best of your existence. They're not going to tell you that. Your Creator is going to tell you that because He wants what is best for you and He doesn't want anything material in return. Let's leave it there guys, until next time. Assalamu alaikum.